Welcome to the Doll's House Quiet Book Sew Along. Um, we are working on the living room today. Um, so I have already basted my batting to my living room room. And um, just done a layout of all the pieces that I included in my room. Just so that I can get a really good visual of, of what I've included. If there's anything that jumps out at me that I want something else. Or um, if I want to change out anything once I see it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, take off the phone, um, on the entire phone actually, and the curtains as well as the bottom of the couch because those are the pieces I can't sew first. Um, so I am a batch sewer. I do really like to just sew as many things at, at once as I can um, just for efficiency's sake. So I'm just going to throw a pin in all of these pieces and prepare that to go to the machine to sew. So I'm going to sew all the way around the window. Um, you can add cross panes if you want window panes in your window, um, anything you'd like there. I'm going to sew around my end table and maybe sew a drawer or a door or something just as decoration on the bottom. And then I'm going to sew all the way around my couch cushion piece. And if you would like, you can also sew a little arch down here and that looks like the bottom cushion. So it kind of breaks up the back cushion from the bottom cushion for you on your couch. So I'm going to take these three pieces to the machine and sew those, give it a good press, and then I'll be right back. So we have our end table and the start of our couch and our window in our living room. We are ready to move on to the next step. And um, what I'm going to do next is actually set this aside and grab my curtains. And what I'm going to do with my curtains is just run a gathering stitch along the top edge of each of them. Um, and a gathering stitch is typically a basting stitch or your longest straight stitch. And you just want to leave long tails at either end. Um, this allows you to pull the um, bobbin thread and um, gather the top of that curtain so that we can stitch it in place. So I'm going to do that. Um, and while I'm at my machine... Because I'm just such a big fan of batch stitching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two handset pieces for my phone, um, both of them, and I'm going to sandwich this, um, the phone cord in between it. So I've got my phone cord all cut out, and I have a knot in each end. I know that's really hard to see, but I have just a, a, just a quick slip knot on each end. Um, and what that knot does is it helps just prevent the ribbon or cording or whatever it is you're using from slipping out the through the stitches. Um, it's just one more level of security once you have sewn it in place. Um, so I'm just going to pin that in place as well, which is always really fun. Um, and then just throw another pin in this other handset. And I am just going to sew all the way around this handset while I'm also, and then I'm going to also do the basting. Um, and that'll just let me batch sew all of the next steps so that we can come back and put the rest together. I will be right back. So I have basting stitches along the top of both of my um, curtains and long strings left over, long thread tails so that I can, I can gather those. And I have my handset connected to my phone cord. So I'm going to just pull these over here and bring the living room back out so that we can power through the next couple of steps. Um, and again, if you don't like batch sewing, please, please, please feel free to stop and, and do each of these one at a time. Um, it is whatever is, makes you happiest, especially if you have little ones underfoot. Sometimes batch sewing isn't the most ideal situation because you can kind of forget what you're up to. So our next step is going to be to place our phone back on here and we do want to make sure that we get that phone cord underneath here as well. You can have that coming out anywhere you'd like. I'm going to put mine at the base it toward the bottom and I'm just going to throw a pin in there. It's always fun to pin these tiny little ribbons um, hopefully without stabbing yourself too too much. Um, and then I'm going to throw another pin just to keep the phone in place. And we're not going to attach the handset anywhere because we want little ones to be able to, once you teach them what that is, um, want, <laughs> want them to be able to play phone with their little dolly. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to throw a pin in that actually um, while I'm sewing the next few things just so that it stays out of my way. Um, but 
don't sew around that. Don't sew that one down unless you would like to. If you'd like to, that's perfectly okay as well. Just be cautious of the loop that you would form in that situation because you don't want your little one to get caught in that loop. Um, so I've got my phone pinned down and ready to sew. I am going to place the rest of my couch down as well. And you can see on my couch, I did sew the little um, cushion, which I, I quite like. I'm very glad I took the, the extra minute to do that. I'm just going to pin that one in place. And then it's up for the curtains. So for the curtains, when you run a gathering stitch, it can be very helpful to change your, your bobbin thread to a different color so you know which thread is your bobbin thread, which thread to pull. Um, but I didn't feel like changing out my thread color, so I just know that I did this face up. And so I know I'm going to pull this bottom one. And you just want to gather it a little bit. Um, it's just a curtain, so gather however much or as little as you'd like. And um, just pin in place along the top of your window. I'm going to turn this so it's a little easier for me to reach. Um, it doesn't have to be super neat. It doesn't have to be very even. Um, we all know sometimes we just kind of shove that curtain open. Um, you just kind of want it to, to be a little playful. Um, so I'm going to grab the second one and do the same thing and just gather that. I'm going to separate my stitches, my threads first because they're all twisted. Okay, and then I am ready to place this one as well. You just kind of want to line that up along the top edge of your window and kind of align the outside to the outside edge of the window as well. But really, the placement of that is completely up to you. You can do whatever you would like with that. Um, have fun with it, as always. So that is ready for me to go stitch. I'm going to stitch along the top edge of my window. Um, this is also a great place if you have some really pretty lace scraps, some um, particularly like thin lace straps, you can do a little valence over the top. Um, it's a really great way to use up those little pieces of something that's just too pretty to toss, uh, but it's not quite big enough for use in most of your most of your projects. It's a really great place to just put that along the top and top stitch it in place. I'm also going to top stitch all the way around the base of the couch and um, the base of the phone. Not the top of the phone, not the handset, just the base of the phone. Being Being careful going over that ribbon as well. So I'm going to go do that, and then I will be right back. So we have our curtains attached. Be sure to remove those basting stitches. Um, the phone is attached with the handset nice and loose and free. It could be really fun to put a little bit of Velcro here and on the back side of this so that it sticks if you want, if you happen to have Velcro on hand. Um, and my couch is all complete, so I'm actually done with the living room already. That was such a quick sew. Um, I think it, in fact, I know it took longer to pick out fabrics than it did to actually put that one together, which is fantastic. Um, please feel free to um, personalize again if you want to add some cute little rectangles that look like picture frames to your walls or whatever it is. Um, really go to town and have fun creating a little living room for your little one. Um, thanks for joining us for the Doll's House Quiet Book Living Room Sew Along. Hope to see you next time. Okay, so we're going to do a little bonus room here. So this is for you, um, or if you're teaching your little ones to sew, they might really enjoy having a sewing room in their quiet book. Um, so we're using pieces from other rooms for some bits. Um, these are either the end tables or the side tables from the living room or the bedroom. We have a rectangle that is um, 15 by 4 inches, cut on the bias, of course. And then this will be uh, available on the website. We'll write a quick blog on how to construct this and um, include this piece for download so you can cut this piece out as well. And then this is just literally a scrap of fabric I pulled from my, my trash pile, uh, my scrap pile. You can cut out a specific shape if you want. You could make it look like you're sewing a t-shirt or some pants or a little quilt if you want to, um, but it's just a little piece of fabric that we've got here. I went with knit because that's what I've been working with the most lately, so that's what I had handy. 
Um, but you could choose a woven here. Just make sure to cut it on the bias, just like we've been cutting all of our pieces. Um, so we are going to construct this just like we've constructed all the other rooms. Um, I have it laid out so that I know where everything should go and where I want it. And for this one, I'm actually going to pin a lot of the pieces down before we sew that first layer because they layer somewhat intricately because what we're going to do with this scrap piece of fabric here is we're actually just going to stitch it um, right here underneath where this um, the sewing machine is and not anywhere else so it's still loose and free and can still move about just like if it was being sewn. So I'm just going to put a pin right through here where I want to add some stitches. Um, I don't, I want those to kind of be hidden. I'm going to stitch just underneath where it's going to get attached with the sewing machine anyway. And I want that to kind of be freewheeling and able to move about as you turn the page um, of the book. So then I'm going to add just a couple of pins to the sewing machine just to keep it in place while we stitch the, the sewing desk. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just flip those pieces up and out of the way. And I will throw a pin through both of these right at the same time right here to keep them out of the way while I am sewing the sewing desk. Um, I am going to sew this all at once. Um, there's slight overlap, just very slight, just because I didn't want any of the background showing through on the connection point between my two fabrics. Um, I went for slightly different fabrics for the, the um, legs of my sewing desk and the top of my sewing desk. Um, if I'm being completely honest, it's just because I didn't have enough of this star fabric on hand to do the top of the desk. And I just really liked how clean and beautiful that was um, for a sewing space because it really lets the other fabrics shine. Um, so just a few pins to hold those in place. I'm going to stitch all the way around um, this end table piece. I'm also actually going to add a drawer and maybe a cupboard look to the front of each of those and then just stitch all the way around the four edges of the table top. Give it a really good press and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have a sewing desk. Um, I added, they're really subtle, I think you can really only see them up close, but I added drawers to each of these with a little drawer pull and um, I gave this a really good press so it is ready to go. So I'm gonna take out that one pin that's holding these little bits up. And I'm going to drop this down and put this pin down here. Um, and I'll add another pin over here. And actually because um, I really want this stitching to just be here, what I'm going to do actually is just pin that through those, those two layers. I've got both of these fabrics pinned here. And then I'm going to push this out of the way and I'm going to sew around the sewing machine and then I'll move this back down when I get up here to sew this section. And these stitches will actually hold this in place and that'll be my loose little sewing project on my sewing machine. Um, I am not going to come down and sew the needle. You sure could. You could come around and just do a straight stitch down and back up and keep going around that curve. I'm going to let it kind of be, be loose with my project, I think. I guess we'll find out when I come back. So I'm going to go stitch that and I will be right back. So you now have a little sewing space to put in your quiet book as well. We have a loose project ready underneath the sewing machine being stitched as we speak. There are so many possibilities here for personalization. You could add a little cone of thread here just stitched on your machine with a little line running over here. You could even do the same down here and outline a little presser foot or um, add a little puppy or a kitten underneath the desk if that's what you've got in your, in your house. Um, but if your kiddo really likes to hang out with you while you're sewing um, or really wants to learn how to sew, this could be a really fun addition to the quiet book. Um, and if you're making this for not your little one, <laughs> this is a really great way to just have fun and create the sewing space that you really want. Who knows, you could even have a little fabric stash in the background um, to add to your collection. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this bonus room. Please be sure to head to um, the website to pick up the, the bonus file for this, for this sewing machine. Um, you could 
easily change this out. Put a typewriter there if you're um, a writer. Change it up to an art easel if, if that's what your thing is. Um, really personalize it and make it your own. Um, but I really like this bonus page. It really, it really brings some personalization and specificity to the homes of those of us who sew, which hopefully is you. Um, thanks for joining us for this bonus page sew along. I hope to see you next time. Thank you.